this thing on. Oh, it is on. Hey, old guy here for all us other old guys and young guys if you want to watch too, but uh, we're going to build our own CNC. So let's get started. So we're going to build this CNC and you're going to say, well, wait a minute, it's already built. Well, the truth of the matter is it's going to be done when this video series starts because I didn't want any lag time in between videos. There's about seven or eight videos. They're about 15 minutes a piece. And I don't like them to be longer than that because the old guys like to take their naps. Except this first video might be closer to 20. Um, why watch my video? There's a lot of guys out there that are really talented and they do a lot of good work. But they don't go into the design so much as they go into like assembling of kits and I didn't really want to watch someone assemble a kit. Um, the cost on this size of a table was a little cost prohibitive as far as ball screws and linear motion are really expensive on this. So I had to design a different way of how to get my motion that would be a little bit cheaper. Um, and I wanted to make it out of wood. I'm kind of a wood guy and that actually is a little bit cheaper, so that's why. Um, what you see here is not what I necessarily built from the beginning. I had to change some things along the way, and you'll see that. Some of this is gonna change. This is not how I originally built it, and you'll see that, and I'll give you the update when the video is gone. So with that, uh, it took about six weeks to build this, about four to five weeks of actual video. I already had the base and the torsion box done, so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain that um, in these next videos. This is where I explain how I build the face. I used a three quarter inch plywood and made my own glue lambs. The dimensions are three by three and a half. I use plywood because it's more stable and also because I was able to lap joint everything, the legs and the cross piece to, all together, which made it much more stable. So there's eight legs, four cross pieces, and a couple things you need to keep in mind when you build your base. It's got to be stable and strong enough for your needs. And secondly, it's got to be flat. It doesn't necessarily have to be level, but it's got to be flat all in the same plane. And this ensures for your Z axis consistency. Here I'm explaining how I use the cross string method to make it all flat. This is the torsion box. It's a three quarter inch piece of MDF full sheet, which is actually 49 by 97, which is just a little bigger than the base. But when I built the base, I three quartered myself and the base is actually three quarters big. So it all worked out fine, or it's actually an inch half big. So I've got plenty of room for this torsion box to fit on. My three and a half inch pieces here make my grid system all the way throughout. These here are lap joints or half joints, what you want to call so it all interlocks together. It's all glued and screwed with pocket hole screws to make it a little more, well, a lot more stable. Unless you put a pocket hole screw in there upside down, in that case, you don't pocket hole screw that one. But you do pocket screw all the rest. And there's no wiggle on this. This thing is all perfect. It's as flat as it can be. Right now, I have a full sheet of MDF that <clears throat> sits on top of this. But my intent, if you can see that this is designed to be, it can be split equally into four quadrants. And I will have a, a four piece top that will sit on here. And each one of these different quadrants will have its own vacuum system and hopefully I can make a, a strong enough vacuum system that will hold down my parts and then take the part, the place of mechanical clamping. I use two 37 millimeter blocks to keep the rail off the torsion box so I can mount an air action valve in it later. But I'm gonna redo this and get the angle iron upright like I'm showing right there. I'm gonna cut that bevel off the top and that way I can remove the spacers here on the bracket and then the bracket will be closer to the rail and that'll be a lot more stable. So the rail is held back the same distance as the gantry and the router combined. 
so you don't need it to go all the way to the end. Also, the length of my rail is whatever the table length is plus the width of this bracket here. In my case, that comes out to be 106 inches. I had an extra two inches just for good measure, just to give myself a little wiggle room. So enough talking. Let's take this thing off and do some cutting and do some building. Using a 60 grit sanding wheel on a four and a half inch angle grinder, polish it up, make it look pretty. After the 60, a little bit of 80. And that'll smooth it up and make it kind of shiny. Santa Maria. Still hot. Okay, so for grinding on this for like the last 20 minutes, I finally got it clamped in place. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure it's flush with the outside here. It's flush with the outside here. I'll put a screw down in through here and I'll just flush this up all the way down. I'm not going to screw it off completely because I may have to adjust it later, but I'll put enough screws in here to make sure that it's solid. Okay, that's this side. Now we got to flip it over and do the other side. Grind all that angle iron, smooth it out, polish it up, make it look pretty. Uh, then grind up and polish the other angle iron, and then grind up and polish the other angle iron, and then screw all that together. But by the magic of video, this should only take us like five minutes. Okay, a couple things to point out here. Um, after I polished this, I don't know if it's because it got so hot, which it got really hot, it's actually got a little bit of a bow to it. So when I go ahead and mount this other side here, gotta make sure, not that it's just flush here, but it's also the same uh, flushness with the angle iron on the bottom of the rail as well. Because from here, it's flush. On the back, it's flush. And in the center, there's probably at least 3 16 that it's bowed. So I'm gonna have to work this all the way down, keep this flush with the rail all the way down. Again, only gonna put a couple screws in it just to make it secure, make it straight. And then when I mount it back onto the CNC or to the torsion box, um, we'll go ahead and get them parallel because remember, it's really important that it's parallel. So pre-drill, screw some uh, inch and a quarter screws in them and we're good. So I remounted the rails. They're all on, they're good. I screwed these off, used a tape, but I made this stick that was exactly the measurement that I need between the angle iron, between these rails. And I just slid it down along through the rails to where it would just fit snug all the way. And it worked pretty well. I had the right dimension until I got right about here. I'm a little tight. So I wanna Take these screws out, drill new holes, countersink them, pull the old, old screws out, and that'll slide over just enough. It's only really about a half a millimeter out, but you know, I want to be as exact as possible. All 
right, the rails are mounted back in place. When I originally mounted these rails, I just clamped them in place, set my desired height, and then drilled the holes through the spacers and into the torsion box. I chose the height here to be about a millimeter above my angle iron. Doesn't really matter what you set the height here as long as it's the same on this side as it on, is on the other side. Uh, the actual overall height of my box when finished will be just enough to where I can use it in conjunction with my table saw. So once you drill these holes, make sure that they're countersunk and the bolts are flush so that the gantry bracket clears without a problem. Okay, well we've got this all done. Torsion box is going back on. Next thing we're gonna do, start building the gantry, but that's gonna be in the next video. This took me about two days, and I know the video is only about 15 minutes or so, kind of surprising. With that, we'll see you next time.